So in this last part of the problem, our goal is to figure out what happens whenever we bring a Q, a charge, we'll call it QC, uh, from infinity and just bring it closer and closer and closer to this uh, the system that we have here and since like we've been working with this is a uh, neutral conducting sphere Well, it's not neutral anymore when you put these in here because we know that way there's a Accumulation of plus charges that is uh, equal to the magnitude of QA plus QC out on the outside as we figured out the first part of the problem But uh, as we bring this uh, this charge here closer closer and closer if I can actually do that closer and closer and closer uh, it's going to accumulate a uh, an equal and opposite total net charge on the surface of the um, of the sphere here, and thanks to the principle of superposition, it's actually going to be equal to the uh, the sum of all three of these charges. Except this one is going to be the um, the negative charge right here. So it'll be Q A plus Q B because that was what we figured out from before in the previous part of the problem, and then um, we're going to subtract the the induced negative charge. That accumulates to try to cancel out the effects from that electric field from that uh, charge right there so plus qc so to answer the last part of the question part e uh, directly is what parts of the questions actually change um this so these parts of the questions do not change because uh, the uh, the effects from this charge just end on the surface of the uh, conducting sphere here. These negative charges take care of everything so that the electric field lines from this charge actually just terminate on the surface of the sphere and nothing happens within the inside of the sphere. So these ones don't change at all. But the surface area of the, um, of the of this changes. And I'll just rewrite these in, in yellow. These actually just, or uh, orange, these actually, this will turn into QA plus QB minus QC divided by the surface area of the large sphere, which is a four pi r cubed. And then if we move down to part B, what is the surface area, or what is the electric field on the outside? Like I said, um, so there's positive charges out here so that they push on the outside, they emanate radially outward from the outside, but then you have a bunch of negative charge that's uh, accumulating from this QC as it, um, um, thanks to existence. So this will actually end up changing, and I'll go ahead and write this in uh, orange. It's pretty easy change. You just add in the new charge that's on the surface of the sphere, and remember it's a negative charge because it wants to uh, neutralize the new charge that was brought into the system. R squared, and it points radially outward. All right, and then if we go down to um, let me go ahead and just signify that everything in um, oops, in orange is actually part E. And then uh, if we look on the inside of these uh, cavities right here, these actually don't change. Like I said, the electric field lines actually just terminate on the outside of the sphere, so nothing changes on the outside of those, so those are good. And then if we look at the force on the inside of this charge right here, uh, the force on each one of these, there's no net force on there because like I said, the new electric field just terminates on the outside of the sphere, so none of it actually gets within the the, uh, the surface uh, cavities of the, uh, the charges right here. And so there's no electric field that is acting on each one of these charges, so there's no forces, so that doesn't change at all. So there are only two parts that change, just the, the surface area on the outside and then the electric field uh, on the outside of that conducting sphere.